My name is Heather McKay. I'm an occupational therapist and a dementia care specialist. On behalf of Comfort Care and At Your Side Home Care, I'd like to thank you for listening and learning about vascular dementia. As you gather information about vascular dementia and find ways to apply it in your own life, I hope you'll share your knowledge and experience with friends, neighbors, family members, coworkers. In our short time together, I'll share information and tips I've collected along the way. In my own experience, working in home health, hospice, community-based practice, dementia care education, and caring for my own grandmother who had vascular dementia for the better part of 15 years. These are some things that I think everybody should know about vascular dementia, whether you're thinking about your own brain or supporting people you know living with the disease. So help me spread the word. Here are some things that I'll share today. We're going to look at some of the science behind vascular dementia. I want to see the hallmark signs of the condition, like what to look for or what makes vascular dementia distinct from all the other types of dementia. We'll examine the journey of vascular dementia, like how things change over time. And I'll share some helpful home care strategies that have worked for families and professionals to create days that are more meaningful, safe, and pleasant for people living with vascular dementia and their caregivers. Keep in mind, helpful strategies include things to try and things to avoid. Imagine if you're sitting with a friend at her kitchen table talking about dementia caregiving. I mean, after all, 16 million Americans are helping a friend or family member living with dementia. In fact, the majority of dementia care is done unpaid by families and friends. Well, I wouldn't be surpri surprised if your friend asked this question. What's the difference between dementia, vascular dementia, and Alzheimer's disease? It's a common question that I answer in presentations, consultations, and these kitchen table talks every week. Let me share with you the quick explanation that I use that really gets heads nodding. See, dementia is this umbrella term. My, my arms automatically go up when I explain that because dementia is a category of diseases. With dementia writ written way up high like that, there are all different types of dementia underneath the umbrella. But here's what really gets heads nodding. When I say dementia is a word like cancer, See, most people understand that cancer is an umbrella term. Whether they say it like that or not, they do know that cancer is a category of, of diseases because they know that there are many different types of cancer. Most people know skin cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer. It goes down the line. They also know that skin cancer is different from lung cancer, but they're both cancer. Well, that's how the dementia terminology works too. With dementia written way up high, underneath that umbrella we have different types. Alzheimer's disease, the number one most common type. Vascular dementia, second most common type. Lewy body dementia, frontal temporal lobe dementia, early onset Alzheimer's, it goes down the line. Vascular dementia is different from all the rest, but they're all dementia. Now don't be surprised at the kitchen table. If your friend says, well, you're the first person to explain those words in ways that's easy to understand and remember. Now you can zero in on that second most common type of dementia, vascular dementia, and share some more information. People often ask me, Heather, how does this disease work? If we look at some science behind vascular dementia, we got to talk about blood flow. Vascular dementia includes problems with memory, communication, reasoning, judgment, and other thought processes caused by reduced blood supply to your brain. You can think of it like a plumbing problem. Our brains need constant supply of blood to bring oxygen and nutrients through a, a network of vessels called the vascular system. If there's a problem with the pump, your heart, 
or blocked vessels, that vascular system, then blood doesn't reach the brain cells and they eventually die. In some cases, vascular dementia develops after a stroke, blocks an artery to the brain, but vascular dementia can also result from other conditions that damage the blood supply and the vessels that go to the brain, depriving your brain of vital oxygen and nutrients. Vascular dementia is widely considered the second most common cause of dementia after Alzheimer's disease, and there's no law that says you can only get one type of dementia. So vascular dementia often coexists with other types of dementia. Now, your friends may ask, what's the risk factors for this type of dementia? Well, the same factors that increase your risk for heart disease and stroke, including diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and smoking, also increase your risk of vascular dementia. The good news is this, controlling those other risk factors can lower your chances of developing vascular dementia. dementia. And that's good because treatments to control heart disease or control diabetes may be relatively easy. You don't have to cure those diseases. You just need a treatment that keeps those conditions under control to lower your risk of vascular dementia. Now, just like the other types of dementia, vascular dementia is progressive with no cure yet. As the disease progresses, the person will need help in every aspect of life as the brain changes. In the absence of a cure though, millions of healthcare providers and family caregivers focus treatment on maximizing skills and abilities in every stage and enhancing quality of life for everybody involved. Let's name a few hallmark signs or characteristics of vascular dementia your friend at the kitchen table may be wondering how to recognize signs of vascular dementia. Well, at first, people living with vascular dementia might behave out of character or have a hard time thinking and reasoning due to this early impact on their brain tissue. Exactly which skills and abilities are impacted by vascular dementia and how quickly the condition progresses well, it depends on the severity and location of the impaired blood supply. Thus, the progressive decline is highly varied, which just means some skills decline quickly while others are preserved longer. And the progression is individualized, which means people with vascular dementia have their own unique blend of strengths and challenges, depending on the brain areas that are impacted. Lots of caregivers I've met describe the order of changes or path of vascular dementia as patchy. What they mean by that, they'll say, well, my husband has some skills that are as good as ever. His short-term memory, for example, seems to be fine. But other skills like decision-making, managing our finances, keeping track of household projects, things that he always used to do for, for himself, those are harder now. As time goes on, that combination of losses and preserved strengths trends down. But for a long time, he has this patchy mix of things he does just fine along things he can no longer do by himself. Over time, vascular dementia progresses in a stair-step pattern. Here's what I mean. Noticeable changes like kerplunk are followed by periods of no change. This is like a plateau and then kerplunk another drop. That's different than the pattern seen in Alzheimer's disease. See, with Alzheimer's progression, it follows a pretty predictable straight line down. Caregivers will read a description of Alzheimer's disease and say, that reads like the story of our life. Or they'll say, mom progressed with her Alzheimer's disease by the book. Well, families dealing with vascular dementia, the second most common type, often tell me, I mean, we were perking along just fine. We had finally adjusted to the new normal when boom, dad changed. It was a, norm, a noticeable drop and he never bounced back. We were at a new normal, which lasted for a while and then boom, he changed again. Each time 
it sort of felt like the bottom fell out. And in addition to that stair step pattern, people with vascular dementia also exhibit lots of fluctuations. Some days or some times of the day are better than others. Well, stages of vascular dementia, like Alzheimer's disease, are measured in mild, moderate, or severe. Or you might read about those same three as early, middle, late. Symptoms during each stage of vascular dementia are similar to those of Alzheimer's disease and become more similar as the disease progresses, but with important differences in the beginning. Each stage brings new challenges and they include, let's go over some of those. In the mild stage or early on, the main early symptoms of vascular dementia are often not forgetfulness, but, but rather difficulty with planning or organizing and following steps to do a task like cook a meal. They might have trouble making decisions as well as slower speed of thought and problems concentrating, including short periods of confusion. In that middle stage or the moderate disease stage, as vascular dementia progresses, the symptoms become closer to those of moderate Alzheimer's disease. Memory loss and confusion just get worse and people begin to have problems recognizing family and friends and understanding their time and place. Learning new things, carrying out steps of an activity and coping with new situations are challenging in the middle stage. In addition, those mood and behavioral changes like confusion and suspiciousness, feeling agitated or depressed, those are common feelings for people in the middle stage. Hallucinations, delusions, and feeling paranoid might happen more frequently. As the person in moderate stage, vascular dementia struggles with personal care. They may want to do things for themselves, but they can't get through the steps in the right order, or they can't figure out the mechanics of doing it with their own body. Have you ever seen someone try to figure out how to get in a chair? Like they don't know how to get in, so they sort of crawl in head first. Or somebody who has trouble opening a container because they can't use the two sides of their body together. A person may have trouble in the bathroom because it's hard to manage their clothes or work the shower faucet or the toilet or use a washcloth at the sink. All of these are things we take for granted with our normal movement, but in the middle stage, body movements that once felt, once felt like automatic pilot may no longer flow smoothly. Incontinence is common during this stage just as the person may lose the motor control the motor coordination and control to get everything in the right place at the right time. Caregivers out there are nodding if they've seen this struggle during self-care activities. And helping the person with those tasks is easier said than done, am I right? The caregiver's challenge is compounded because communication is more difficult in the moderate stage. As the person struggles to find their words and understand what they hear, now, as time goes on, the late stage has its own characteristics. As more areas of the brain are cut off from vital blood supply, communication is limited to only a few words or a few sounds in the late stage. The person's completely dependent on others for personal care and mobility. Near the end of the disease, the immune system is compromised, so frequent recurring infections are common. Eventually, brain changes are so extensive that individuals can no longer control their movements and automatic functions like swallowing are compromised. Now, you may know people who've had vascular dementia for a long time and their plateaus between the stair steps are long like my grandmother's, while others seem to progress more quickly. Each person experiences vascular dementia differently. On average, the duration of vascular dementia is around five years after symptoms begin, which is a little faster progression than Alzheimer's disease. In many cases, a stroke or heart attack is a cause of death. I'm thinking of you and your friend at the kitchen table. 
And you're probably wondering, Heather, where's the good news? (laughs) The good news is this. Over years of research, people with dementia, families, and professional caregivers of all stripes have discovered effective strategies to improve life for the person living with the disease and their caregivers. Many of the most effective home care strategies don't involve a medicine. After all, there's no magic pill to fix dementia. So we call these non-pharmalogic approaches. For example, just seeing the world from the perspective of those with vascular dementia helps us create days that are more meaningful, safe, and pleasant for everybody. While the days can be long, working with someone's remaining strengths, adjusting our own behavior, and modifying environments can help us create better days together. If you're caring for someone with dementia, consider these strategies. First, it's helpful to give the person more time to think and speak. People with poor blood supply to many parts of the brain often tell me they feel a little slow on the draw. Next, it's helpful to break down tasks into doable steps. One of the most common mistakes I see is when caregivers give a little too much information. I'm thinking of a caregiver who arrived to take her mom to an appointment. She greeted her mom in the living room and then proceeded to spill the whole day's agenda. She said, hey, mom, how you doing? Mom looks up, I'm fine, how are you? She said, I'm good, but listen, I'm glad you got your shoes on. It's raining outside, I got the car pulled up front. I'm gonna get your walker and take it with us to the doctor's office in case we have to park far from the door, but once we get in there, they'll have a wheelchair. If we need to go to another part of the building, we're not gonna be there for very long. Are you ready to go? (laughs) Well, you can just imagine with all that information that went over mom's head, she said, no, no, I'm not going anywhere might seem unnatural at first to hold back some of the information, but breaking down the task into doable steps and putting those steps together may actually be the easiest way of getting out the door. Another strategy for creating better days is to follow a daily routine, but be ready to flex. Now, here's what I mean. Have you ever heard a caregiver say, well, at our house, we, you know, we need to accomplish our work in the morning because after lunch, my husband, he likes to, you know, rest for a couple of hours, read the newspaper, watch some news on TV. He'll help me with dinner, you know, and then we eat like a couple of early birds. Well, that's a couple who's figured out what works for them and the predictable daily routine actually makes life easier for them both. When something unusual pops up, like an unpredictable chore in the afternoon or some evening outing like a special occasion, why the wife knows that her husband will need a little bit more time and it'll be a little harder for him, so she just plans on giving him a little more help. That's the key. Build in the routine and lean on it when possible, but caregivers be ready to flex because people with dementia just aren't as flexible as they once were. Since vascular dementia comes with lots of fluctuations, I mean, one day the person seems to be doing well and the next day they need more help, why, it's helpful to pay attention to what the current care needs are and then just gauge your support based on what their current abilities are. It could change day to day or it could change hour to hour. Leverage the person's preferred skills in familiar activities, after all, It's still a use it or lose it proposition. Offer a heart healthy diet. Remember, we want that pump working as well as it can. Encourage brain exercises with modifications if needed, like play card games together, do puzzles, keep a journal. All of those things are good for your brain. Give medications as prescribed especially those treatments that help to control heart disease, diabetes. Pair your verbal instructions with visual cues. Just to provide more information, the person with vascular dementia may understand your visual cues better than long explanations. Try listening to their favorite music. Areas of the brain that understand music are preserved longer for many people with dementia, and music taps emotional memory, rhythmic movement. It even helps you put one foot in front of the other. Speaking of walking, encourage exercise. 
such as just getting out. Go for a walk if possible. Provide supervision for safety. Communicate with empathy. Here's what I mean by that. It means focusing more on the feelings and less on the facts. A person with dementia can tell if you care about their problem or if you're just sweeping it under the rug because they can hear it in the tone of your voice and in your body language. So take a deep breath, listen to their concern, and use empathetic words to point out their feelings. Here's an example. It sounds like you're missing your husband. Or, I can tell you're looking for something. Or, it seems like you're at the end of your rope. I haven't fixed anything. I'm just pointing out the feeling. That's using empathy. Once you've made that emotional connection and the person's listening to you, you can redirect their attention by changing the subject. Changing the location and changing activities can also help shift the person's attention to something less upsetting. Redirection and distraction are proven effective strategies for managing challenging behavioral symptoms of dementia, but it takes practice. So don't give up. If your redirection doesn't work, pause, listen a little more, and try to make that emotional connection before you change the subject. Because vascular dementia impacts memory, thinking, reasoning, judgment, while well, avoiding some things can make better days for the person and their caregivers. For instance, try to avoid arguing. Caregivers, have you heard this phrase? You can be right or you can be happy. <laughs> it means letting some things go for the sake of keeping the peace. And I know it's hard to do sometimes, especially with our closest loved ones. I've always said, if you can't argue with your spouse, who can you argue with? But I know that if my spouse could no longer reason the way he or she used to, then our arguments over the facts will end in a stalemate. Have you ever felt the person with dementia is pushing you into an argument? I mean, they're upset over something that you know to be untrue, so you push back. Have you noticed that as long as you're willing to push, they can push too? Well, that, my friends, is a stalemate. And it has to do more with a feeling of needing to be heard and wanting to be right. In this situation, there's only one person who can stop pushing the person with a healthy brain. Caregivers, when you find yourself in a stalemate, and we'll all be here eventually, my best advice is simple. Take a deep breath and stop pushing. Correcting the person with vascular dementia can easily lead to an argument, but we're not that different. Who really likes to be made to feel stupid? I mean, none of us like that. So. Practice some alternative approaches that don't say to the person, you're wrong. You might say, try this and show the person a better way. Or ask the person for their help. Can you help me? And show them the correct first step. It all feels better than saying, that's not right. Avoid startling the person. After all, when understanding the situation is difficult for the person with vascular dementia, they can seem on edge or easily startled. Everything will be easier for you both if you can avoid scaring the pants off the person in the beginning of your interaction. Just practice approaching the person from the front. Let them see you before you're in their personal space. Offer your hand to greet the person or show your open arms to invite their hug. It's more comfortable and safer way of beginning the interaction than swooping in from the side or from behind. Given the nature of vascular dementia, try to avoid food and drinks that just contribute to high blood pressure or elevated blood sugars. Don't expect the person to do all they used to do or at least the way they used to do it. Shift in your expectations can actually go a long way towards settling into a new normal. And finally, don't expect to do everything yourself. Caregiving is a team sport, so find your teammates. 
a final take home message for today. The Comfort Care team is ready and willing to collaborate with you on strategies and solutions for your dementia care needs. People with vascular dementia have a unique needs and can continue to live at home with support throughout its progression. Even an extension of six to 12 months at home can benefit people with vascular dementia and their families. Comfort Care understands the disease's progression and redesigns plans as our clients' needs change to help them live at home as long as possible and feel at home no matter where they live. Keep in mind if you'd like more information about something you learned today, feel free to contact your local Comfort Care office for additional resources, support for family caregivers, and specialized home care for people living with dementia. Thank you.